Greetings from Ingrain. We're located in Manhattan, Kansas, the center of all things hard red winter wheat and home to the Kansas State University Department of Grain Science. My name is Kendall McFall, and this morning I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the phrenograph and how it is used. The phrenograph essentially measures and records the resistance of a dough uh, with mixing paddles. And uh, it was developed to help millers and bakers put a number on the gluten strength of a particular flour. We all know that uh, flours with strong gluten typically absorb more water than those with uh, weaker gluten. They, we sometimes say they're more uh, stable and um, able to withstand more mixing. All of those things come from our uh, knowledge of what the phrenograph gives us. Um, the types of things that it measures uh, most often is what we call absorption, and that's the amount of water required to center that curve on the 500 Braybender unit line. That's an arbitrary line developed by um, the Braybender company, and it's meant to mimic a, a well-developed flower. And so we adjust the amount of water so that our dough, when it's fully developed, uh, ex exerts the, the, the resistance on those dough paddles at a known amount, and that centers the curve on the line. Oftentimes we'll talk about peak time, and that indicates the uh, dough development time uh, beginning the moment the water is added until the dough reaches that maximum uh, consistency. The arrival time is another measure, and that's the when the top of the curve touches the 500 uh, Bray Bender unit line. Uh, departure time is the time when the top of the curve leaves the 500 Bray Bender unit line. And then um, what we most often think about when we think about a phrenograph is what is called the stability. And that is the difference uh, in the time between when it arrives and when it departs from that uh, 500 uh, Bray Bender unit line. And when it, it's, it's described in minutes, something with a short stability might be two, three minutes. Something with a long stability could be uh, 12, 14 minutes. And again, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to uh, be correlated to loaf volume or bread quality. There's a lot of things that go into that, but it does tell us a little bit about the right amount of water to add to that flour and how much mixing it might take to get it to um, optimum and then how long it can be there before it begins to break down. Uh, the mixing tolerance index is, a, is an indicator to help us understand when that uh, flour might begin to break down. It's uh, the difference between when the, uh, uh, the Braybender value at the top of the curve and then five minutes uh, after that and that spread is often called the mixing tolerance index, but uh, typically uh, millers and bakers focus most on absorption and stability. So as we look at a, a flour and say, well, this is a weak gluten flour, it would probably have lower water absorption and a shorter stability time. And again, this just gives us a new language to talk uh, about, a new set of uh, terms that we can use to describe flour and it can build confidence in uh, wheat purchasing uh, as well, so that when we know and can characterize the flour, um, we can have a good sense of what we're gonna get when it arrives. Again, Ingrain wants to be your uh, most trusted uh, enzyme supplier. If you ever have questions about your flour or uh, understanding what a farinograph might uh, tell you about your flour, please don't hesitate to reach out.